I work in my garage all year long and up until now is using a window air conditioner and a 5000 watt 240 volt heater and they did an okay job but they can never really keep up. So in this video I'm going to show you how I installed a combination unit to do both heating and air conditioning in my garage. The unit I'll be putting in is a Mr. Cool split ductless system that's 18,000 BTUs. I made a video early this summer where I put one of these in at my friend's house in his basement, but the difference was it was the two of us doing the job. This time I'm doing the entire thing alone, including the electrical. All split ductless systems have two major parts. You've got the unit that goes outside and the piece that you hang in your wall inside. Now I'm going to start with the outside work, beginning by hanging this wall bracket. I chose the wall bracket here because my ground really isn't level and it also isn't a bad idea to get the unit off the ground. Mounting this bracket onto concrete is really easy. Just drill holes using a hammer drill and then use the included bolts to fasten it to the wall. And at the moment those arms are still loose. Now you could go ahead and measure and then screw them to the wall as well, but I decided to go ahead and just set the outside condenser in place. Then make sure the arms were lined up, mark the holes, and then I'm going to drill them as well and secure them to the wall. The bracket also makes sure that you have about 6 inches of clearance behind the unit, which is what Mr. Cool recommends. Now I'm ready to mount the inside unit. Now you need to be about 25 feet away or less. Now in my case, the condenser is just on the outside wall, so that won't be a problem. Now Mr. Cool makes this install really easy with this template, but somehow stupidly I threw this template away when I unboxed it because I was trying to get rid of the cardboard on trash day. Fortunately the template was the only thing I threw out because the bracket itself is already on the back. You just need to unclip it and now you can put it on the wall. Now I knew where I wanted to put it and fortunately this bracket has a ton of different holes so you can easily line it up with your studs. And once I got it in position I put one screw in, then I leveled it out, and then put a few additional screws in to make sure everything was tight. Now the screws I'm using are actually called cabinet screws and they work out really well because they've got that big fat head. Now I needed to drill the hole that all the hoses and wires will go through. This is the one I was missing from the template, but fortunately the tech support people gave me the measurement, and the kit also includes this hole saw. Another tip to keep the mess down is to hold your vacuum cleaner underneath the hole saw while you're drilling. With the inside part of the hole done, I've got to do the other side, but you can't really get the tool through that hole to break through. To eliminate that, I'm using the piece I cut out as a guide, along with a long drill bit to make a pilot hole. Now I can use the hole saw to drill that hole from the outside and it'll be a much cleaner job. They give you this collar that you can put inside the hole and it kind of makes a sort of tunnel. And once you've got it in position, you can go ahead on the outside and trim the excess off. You can use a utility knife, but it was a lot easier using this oscillating saw. And when you're done, you'll want to put some silicone around the collar so that you can fasten this outside trim plate. Now I'm ready to mount the inside unit. You've got to start by bending these leader pipes straight off the back because those are going to go into that hole that you just drilled. This unit is fairly heavy and it's definitely awkward trying to get those hoses in position. And since I'm working by myself, using this box made it a lot easier. You want to make sure that nothing kinks and get everything fed cleanly through the hole. And now you can go ahead and hang the top of the unit on the wall and the bottom will just snap into position. You'll definitely know when you get it right and just make sure the unit is secure. Outside we can see all the lines and wires coming out of that hole. We've got the power line along with the cooling lines and this is your drain line that's for the condensate. It's really important that you keep that on the bottom of the stack so that the water can drain out freely. The reason this thing is so popular with DIYers is that you can do the entire job yourself because the system is already pre-filled with Freon. Not just the main system, but these lines themselves have Freon in them. Those little caps you saw at the end are covering a valve, and those valves hold the Freon in these pipes until they're connected up. And you don't need to use any type of a vacuum pump to get the system going. Connecting the refrigerant lines is easy, they just thread together, and they even give you these two wrenches in the kit to tighten them down securely. Now we've just got to connect the other end of the refrigerant lines into the Mr. Cool condenser, but you've also got to think about the coil of hose because you've got to put that someplace, and if you read the directions, you're not supposed to put that extra hose vertically. It can actually cause problems with oil getting trapped, so they recommend keeping it horizontal. Connecting these is super easy, they just thread on like the other end of the line, then tighten them up with the wrenches and you're almost done. But now here's a critical step, you've got to remove those caps because underneath is this allen screw and you're going to insert the tool that they include in the box and you're going to loosen it all the way until it bottoms out. What you're doing here is opening the valve inside that condenser and now all that Freon that was pre-filled can flow completely through the system. And make sure you leave those valves open but you want to replace the caps and screw them down tightly. Now you'll want to do a leak test. 
That just involves spraying some soapy water on the connection to make sure you don't have any bubbles hissing or hear any type of noise. I just need to finish up these pipes. They include this anti-noise tape in the box that you just wrap around the connections and I also connected to the extension onto that condensate line for the water drain. For the electrical work, you're gonna to need to remove this outside cover and underneath you're gonna find two different connections. One of the wires, which is the black one, will connect to the inside unit that you hung on the wall. The other is gonna be connected using something called a pigtail or a whip and that's gonna get connected into your outside electrical box. Now if you're concerned about doing any of this part, you can certainly have an electrician do it for you. Now when I was done, I actually crimped terminals on those wires to help make the connections a little bit more secure. The directions require a 20 amp circuit breaker to run the air conditioner. So for this I'm using a 240 volt breaker. With the inside connection done, now we can move outside and this box is called an AC disconnect. These are required by code so that you have a way to shut your air conditioner off. Now this one has a circuit breaker inside and you connect the wiring from the air conditioner into the breaker here and then the hot wires are coming from the circuit inside the house. Now I'm ready to turn the inside breaker on and see if the unit is working. So I grab the remote control, hit the power button, and everything fired up. Wow, that is putting on cool air. With the unit up and running successfully, I was ready to begin the finishing work. And you might be wondering, what's all that damage on my walls? I cut those sections out to make running the wire a little bit easier. Over the years, I tried to fish wire through tiny little holes and it caused nothing but frustration. So just cut a small section of the wall out using an oscillating saw, and that gives you a really clean cut. And then I fix the hole simply by putting that scrap of wood in place, screwing the top and bottom, and then I can just screw the original piece right back into the wall. Put on your spackling, and in just a couple of minutes, you won't even be able to see the repairs. Now I'm gonna be repainting this entire garage, so I'm not too worried about the finish, but you can see that it's almost impossible to even see where I made the patch. With the inside looking good, now I can finish the outside pipes to make them look a lot better. Now they give you that clay inside the box, but I found it's a lot easier to seal that hole using polyurethane foam. But you want to make sure you get the version that's for windows or doors that isn't going to expand a lot because you don't want to blow that hole up. You just want to fill up the gaps. You also want to bind all your wires and cables together. You don't want to make any kinks, but here I'm using these nylon ties to put that extra electrical cord around the pipes so that I can then put everything inside a channel. This is a trim kit they sell, it's not a lot of money, and it makes these wires look a lot better. It's kind of like a gutter, and then once you get everything lined up, you just put the upper pieces on. The one thing you want to pay attention to is though you need to take care of that condensate drain. So in my case, I took that elbow, drilled a small hole in the corner, because that drain needs to come out and go to the ground. I also decided to put some of that polyurethane inside the joints themselves, because we have a huge problem with mice here, and I don't want them getting inside those pipes and chewing anything up. Now things were starting to look a lot better, but I still had one thing left, and that was to take care of that coil of cooling hose that was on the ground. So I found an easy solution, which was just to use these HVAC nylon ties. This got those pipes off the ground and still kept them horizontal, which is what the directions say you should do. And at this point, the install was looking good and everything is complete. All I had to do was actually use the unit. You might just like using the remote control, and that works out really well because it's also a thermostat. But the other nice thing about this system is you can run it completely with an app, and the app allows you to program a schedule, you can kind of do some diagnostics and change other settings. The air conditioning performance is absolutely awesome. We've already had a couple cold nights, so I also got to try out the heating, and that seemed to work equally well. Working alone, it took me an entire weekend to put this system in, but you need to keep in mind that I also did the electrical. So if you wanna make this a little bit easier on yourself, you might wanna consider paying an electrician because that was about half of the amount of time of the job. This might not be a basic install, but it's definitely something many DIYers can do, and it's certainly worth it. The system here cost under $2,000, and if you paid a pro to put it in, you'd be paying well over five grand. But either way, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.